So far this week, I've defined parametric surfaces and flux integrals. A flux integral measures the interaction of a field with a surface, how much of the field passes through the surface. Now, finally, I'm going to do some example calculations. The first, the surface I want to consider in this video is a disk in the xy plane in R3. So here's the parameterization, r cos theta and r sine theta in x and y, and z equals zero, since the surface is in the xy plane where z equals zero. This is a description of a circle of radius r, and if I let the radius go from zero to a, which is all radii up to a, and if I let the angle go all the way around the circle, the result is all points in a disk, a solid disk, of radius a. Well, I also need to calculate the normal, so here are the two partial derivatives, and the cross product here is zero, zero, r, after simplifying sine squared plus cos squared to one. Well, this is a vertical vector, and that makes sense. The surface is a horizontal surface, so its normal, perpendicular to that, should be vertical. All right, here is a field. This is a constant field with a vertical direction. How much does this field pass through the disk? That's the measure, what's the measure of the interaction? That's what a flux integral calculates. The definition of the flux integral is the integral over the parameter domain, r from 0 to a, theta from 0 to 2 pi, of the field evaluated on the surface dot product with the normal of the surface. So here the field is just 0, 0, k, so I dot that with 0, 0, r, which produces k times r. Well, then I have a separable double integral, and not showing the integral details here, the result is pi a squared k. Well, what is this? Well, pi a squared is the area of the disk, pi times the radius squared, and this is times k, the length of the vector passing through. And this means that the larger the disk, the more of the field passes through it, and the more the flux integral measures that. So this integral really does measure how the field flows through the disk. And here's another example with the same surface. The field here is still vertical, but it's no longer constant. Instead, this field decreases towards the edge of the disk. I could think of both of these as descriptions of water flowing through a pipe, where the surface is some cross-section at some point in the pipe. In the first, the water flow is constant and straight, the same everywhere. In this one, the water flows faster in the middle of the pipe and slower towards the edge, perhaps due to the friction of the pipe. However, there's no turbulence here. The flow is still straight without any eddies or complicated swirls. Well, I expect a smaller interaction since the flow decreases near the edge. So let me calculate the effect. I do the integral. I integrate over the parameter domain. I take the dot product and I get this double integral. It is separable again, and the theta integral is an integral of a constant, so that gives me 2 pi. Then there's the remaining r integral, which I've done here and evaluated on the bounds. And the result of the integral is pi k a squared over 2, which is exactly half of the result of the previous integral. There is less of the field flowing through the disk, or through the pipe, since the flow is slower near the edge whereas the previous field was just as fast everywhere. Finally, here is another example, still with the same surface and the same normal, but with an even more complicated field. This field has movement in all directions and complicated movement with sines and cosines. So this is some kind of turbulent flow. There are perhaps vortices or eddies, and the field goes backwards and forwards all around the disk. What is the net effect? How does it all average out? And this is what a flux integral calculates, the net effect of all the movement of the field through the surface. I do the same integral. I take the dot product of the field evaluated on the surface with the normal. In the field, x and y are replaced by the components of the surface, so that x squared plus y squared is r squared, and the square root of x squared plus y squared is just r. That's what it means to evaluate the field on the surface. The dot product with the normal is just the third component times r, since the normal is still 0, 0, r. Therefore, I get this integral, the integral of the dot product of the field evaluated along the surface with the normal of the surface integrated over the parameter domain. Again, there is no theta in the integral, so the double integral is separable, and the theta part gives 2 pi. The r integral is this integral 
of cosine of pi minus pi r over a times r, and I asked an computer for the antiderivative and evaluated it on the bounds, and the result is 4ka squared over pi. This still has a net positive flow, even with the various kinds of turbulence in the motion of the field. And this is what a flux integral accomplishes. Just looking at the field, I really have no idea how to guess the interaction. But the integral calculates it. It tells me that this combination of sines and cosines leads to a complicated movement of the field, but there is still a net movement through this particular surface. So these are three examples, but this is really just a start. I'm not going to do more examples in the videos, but this week the activities are very important. Practice is needed to get the idea of parametric surfaces and flux integrals into your mind.